Hey. Oh. Uh. Justin? Cat? Justin. Oh, hey, sorry about that. Uh, there was this weird flash and Justin? I... Justin? Um, where am I? You're, you're on the phone with me. No. Why am I in your room? No. You're on the phone with me. You're not in my room. Justin, the phone is off. Well, I gotta stop playing so much of this game. So this is Rune Factory. <laughs> Um, no, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe you should be doing the majority of the review. Okay, um, I can do that. Uh, but you know, you can help me with this game. I mean, it's pretty interesting. Well, yeah, I am a big Rune Factory. Oh, fan. oh, good, because you know, this is my first time actually ever playing this series. Really? What did you think of it? Well, I wasn't quite sure how to play the game at first. Rune Factory: Tides of Destiny is the latest in a long line of animal breeding, crop growing, dating sim titles. Similar to the popular series Harvest Moon, where you play a character who farms and seeks to marry one of the NPC villager girls, Rune Factory is similar, but it adds in a fighting aspect to the game, allowing for a more RPG feel to it. An RPG, but with crop growing. And sheep. In Tides of Destiny, you play as a male character, and your best friend, a female from childhood, has had her soul merge with your body for some mysterious reason. At the same time, you've been transported to either another dimension, or an alternate universe, or another time of your village. So you now have to make your fortune, make friends and relationships in the town, harvest items to sell to make money, and into all of this, you have discovered a huge golem that is now under your control. You can use said golem to sail the ocean blue and search for treasure, fight monsters, and even raise new islands that you can explore. And supposedly, this game is the first in the series to feature an ability to play as a female character and marry one of the male characters at the very end of the main story. You could do that in Rune Factory too. Wait, you could? Yeah, you could have a son or daughter and then you played their character too. If you had a daughter, they could totally get with a male character. Huh! I wonder why they hyped up that so much at E3. Well, the graphics look really nice. It seems they really got a solid style there. And they aren't revolutionary, but they're fun and they remind me of the DS games. And the backgrounds are vast and well rendered. And I never had a problem with figures going through other figures. I did notice that your character will automatically jump in certain areas, which can be distracting as they tend to jump to the lower areas, but that's not a deal breaker. Also, since you're tasked with fostering relationships with the townsfolk, it's important to know where they are at any given moment. So, to help you out, so that you don't break out a pad and pencil, you have a map that you can bring up. I think this symbol means that they're on the move, but I don't know. What? Well, the rule book doesn't say. How's the battle system? It was pretty awkward in the DS versions, in my opinion. Well, the fighting is decent. But with all the things that this game does, the fighting system has to be kind of simple. It seems a, a lot like fighting in Kingdom Hearts and plays much the same. Anyone looking for an innovative fighting system should look elsewhere, but that doesn't deter from the overall experience. It just makes it more basic. Okay, so talk to me about this golem thingy. Okay, so this is the big thing for this version of Rune Factory. It's a golem that lives out in the ocean and, well, it's your adventuring platform as it were. You can move your golem to different islands out in the ocean. Most of them are underwater and so you'll need to find them by getting hints from villagers or hints from your friend's soul, as she will sometimes make comments on things that you'll pass by when you go out into the ocean. A la Legend of Zelda Wind Waker? And just like that, you'll be doing a lot of ocean exploring here too. But, your golem walks a lot faster than the boat in Wind Waker, and you'll be able to discover places a lot faster. To find hidden items, just slap the water and look for ripples. A disturbance like this means that there's an island. Then you can just walk over to it and bring it on up. 
then you can explore it as you will. This island seems pretty gray. What's wrong with it? Well, to put it simply, it's sick, and it needs spirits to make it better. As you explore healthy islands, you'll find little spirits that you can bring with you. And then, when you come to a sick island, just equip one, and it'll go into the ground. Go! Use enough, and the island will become healthy again, and you'll be able to grow sprouts there. Which is where you come into your farming aspect. Nah, kinda. You can only plant sprouts in this game. To make things grow, you capture animals by using the monster taming brush. Monster taming brush? Oh yeah, yeah. Instead of using a sword, you just equip the brush, and you can tame the monsters. Instead of slashing them with the sword, you tame the monsters with the brush, and then they start to work for you. Monster taming brush. Or just go with it! Captured monsters are stored in the monster... or... re... um... minator... thing. Stable? Yeah, that. It's in the golem's chest. And you can also see what monsters can do for you. Sometimes they just give you items like milk or wool. Sometimes they can fight alongside of you. Or sometimes they can grow things. Just see what their specialty is in this book and send them to the specific island to do what they do best. But you need to bribe them with monster cookies to keep them happy. And brushing. Lots and lots of brushing. Now, I hear this game uses voice actors, and knowing you, I suppose you'll say that you have a problem with them. Oh, when don't I? For once, I just want the companies to hire one little girl to do the voice of a little girl. I mean, I loved Odette's voice actress, as she seemed the most natural of the bunch. And she was probably the girl you went after to date and woo, right? Date and woo? I played over 15 hours of this game and all we ever did was chat. What? You didn't bring her items and trinkets? Because girls are so superficial like that? Nah, it was kind of upsetting actually. The only way I can put this is that I played the first three hours of the game and I still had no idea how to play it. I didn't know if I should talk to everyone, hunt, use the golem. It really never gave me a clear path. And that's probably the purpose, but as a beginner to the series, I didn't know that. Well, in this one, I really thought that the game was going to instruct me in-game. And it kind of did, but not as much as I would have expected or have gotten from other games. The other side of the coin, right? Yeah, I honestly had no idea what to do next. Uh, the game gave me so many options without telling me, go here to continue the story. It was literally six hours into the game until I started to get an idea of what Rune Factory was all about. And that's when you started to have fun? Actually, yeah. A lot of fun. But it took me a while. I mean, I didn't even know that when you fight monsters on islands, you lose RP. Lose all your RP, and you start losing HP. I had no idea. Wasn't even paying attention. Just kept on wondering why I was dying from that stupid sheep. Justin, it's like that in every Rune Factory game. RP goes down when you do everything. That's to keep you from doing everything. You have to manage your RP every day. Well, I didn't know. It says in the rule book. Oh, does it? Here's the rule book. You look in it, and you tell me where it says it. Really? Really? But when I got into the groove of things, I really kind of got lost in the game. I started focusing on working with the golem to explore new areas and started trying to up my status with some of the ladies and, and taking care of some of the monsters that were helping me out on the islands and in my barn. There's just so much to do! And yeah, don't get me wrong, the game was tough to figure out at first, but it's, it's an enjoyable game that I see myself playing all the way to the end. Well, all the way to the story end. Why and further? The storyline's pretty basic. You're not gonna get a deep story here. And how the other characters just blindly accept that you have a girl's soul stuck in you bugged me well into the game. Five out of ten. One glaring problem is the lag that you will sometimes experience. Quite often experience, you mean? That's what prevents me from going for a higher score here. Lagging as much as I encountered is just uncalled for. Six out of ten. This music really reminds me of the music from Animal Crossing for the Wii, only in guitar form. And that's a good thing, 
the music isn't so repetitive that you'll be turning down the volume anytime soon. It's not orchestral, and it's not outstanding, but it's a well-done soundtrack, and one that deserves a CD, and I rarely listen to in-game music. 9 out of 10. The game starts out very slow, and doesn't hold your hand. Now that could lose some new players who don't know what to expect from such a game. But seasoned players, as well as viewers of this video, will know what to expect and will have an easier time navigating the game from the get-go. 7 out of 10. This whole series begs for a replay, let alone this game. When I, uh, Justin, went to E3, the person doing the demo there had put in 80 hours. Now that means there's a lot of game to be had. 10 out of 10. Perfect. If you've played any Rune Factory game in the past, you know you will be getting a lot of gameplay. Well, multiply that times 10, and that's what you get from this one. This game is huge. 9 out of 10. So, taking all of that into account, we give the Wii version of Rune Factory Tides of Destiny a final score of 7 out of 10. Ah, I feel myself being drawn back into my body. Bye, Justin. Goodbye. Cat? Okay, you there? Well, it seems like she's back to where she belongs. And, uh, I better take a shower. I've been sitting down here playing this game too long. Ooh, sexy, sexy. Cat! Ah! Ah! Cat! What are you doing here? <laughs> Hikari Sasuki Mino Motoe.